Hey guys, it's OpenQuant here, and today we have question number 12, consecutive heads. In this problem, we have a fair coin, meaning that the probability of heads equals the probability of tails, which both equal one half. And we denote the random variable x sub i as the number of flips until we see exactly i consecutive heads. Let me just illustrate what x sub i really means. So let's say we have a sequence of flips such as this. So for this sequence, x sub one would equal the number of flips until we saw exactly one consecutive head, which in this case is simply the first flip, so it's just one. x sub two would be the number of flips until we saw two consecutive heads. So it's not the first one, it's not the second one, not the third one, but on the fourth one, we have seen two consecutive heads. So x sub two equals four. And lastly, x sub three, by the exact same logic, it's not first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, but on the ninth one right here, we have seen exactly three consecutive heads. And as a result, x sub three in this case is equal to nine. All right, guys, let's jump into the first sub problem, which asks us to compute the expectations of x sub one, x sub two, and x sub three. Let's start with x sub one. So we'll draw a little diagram. So we want to get to one head, which is right there. And we're starting at the, the zero, and we can either circle back if we get a tails with probability one half, because if we do so, we're not really progressing towards the one heads that we're looking for. However, we can also get a heads with probability one half, which would get us to our uh, end game, or like the final value that we're looking for. Now let's compute, now with this illustration, let's compute the expectation of x sub one. I'm just gonna denote it as x so that I don't have to keep rewriting expectation of x sub one. And what we're gonna do is use the definition of expectation, which is essentially a weighted average. And in, in this case, for the discrete case, it's a weighted average where we have the probability of x occurring times the actual value of x, where in this case, x is the number of flips. So we'll start with the tails case. So with probability one half, we get a tails. And if we get a tails, like the diagram illustrates, we're circling back, we're, we're going back to our original state. And that costs us a single flip, so that's one right there. And once we're back here, we still have to get to our end state. We still have to get to our one head. We still have to achieve the expectation of x sub one. So in this case, in the tails case, we're actually going to have one plus x. This one comes from our first flip, which was a tails, which gets us back to our starting point. And this x is the amount of flips necessary to get from the starting point to the end. So that's the tails case. And now we want to add to that the heads case. So if we get a heads on the first flip or on a flip, that's one flip right there, and that actually terminates the game right there. So there's no recursive element to this because after that single flip, which is a heads, our game terminates. So we have this expression right here, which we can solve for x or expectation of x plus one to get our value. So let's say x is equal to one half plus x over two plus one half. So then we have x over 2, we're subtracting x over 2 from both sides is equal to 1 or x is equal to 2 or expectation of x sub 1. So that's the answer to the first sub problem of the first sub problem. So I'm going to actually erase this just so that I have space to write. You know what? Actually, no. Yeah, I'm going to erase this so that we can do the second part. So now we are trying to solve the expectation of x sub two. And I'm gonna start with a diagram again. And this time we're trying to get to two heads. That is our end state right there. So with probability one half, we get a heads. And again, with probability one half, we get a heads. Probability one half, we end up going from our starting state back to our starting state. And with probability one half, we go from the first state where we got one head 
back to our original starting state of zero. And we're going to do the exact same thing this time. We are going to have the expectation of x sub 2. We'll denote it as x. And we'll start with the tails case again. So on our first flip, let's say we get a tails. Now we are exactly back to where we started, where we have to get it costs us a flip, so that's the one. And we still need to get all the way from start to finish, which we have defined to be x. So it's just going to be 1 plus x. So this is the tails case. Plus, now we have the heads case, also occurring with probability 1 half because this is a fair coin. So now we're here, right? We, we have a single head. And two things can happen. We can either get a tails and go back to our starting state, or we can get a heads and reach our end state. So this is not as cut and dry as our first example, where if we just got a heads, the game would terminate. Or once we got our first heads, the game terminated. Now we have two cases. So we're going to actually start with the tails subcase right here. So let's say we got our heads, right? We got our first heads, and then we get a tails right there. Now we're back to our starting state, but this time it's cost us two flips. So we have two plus, and now we're back to the starting state, which means we still need to get x more, uh, we still need to get x more flips. So that's the tails case. And then for the heads case, one half, how many flips did it take for us? So we have one heads right there and our second heads right there, which in this case for x sub two terminates the game. Right, because we are looking for exactly two consecutive heads. So in this case, we would just be having a value of two because there were two flips required to terminate the game. There's no recursive case here because we have reached the end state and the game is over. So now this is our compound expression, which we can then use to evaluate and solve for x. So in this case, we will, I'm just going to begin to simplify right off the bat x over two plus, and then I'm going to solve for this part right here, one half say 1 plus x over 2 plus 1. So this is equal to uh, 1 half plus x over 2 plus, now I'll distribute that 1 half, x over 4 plus 1 half. This is equal to 3 x over 4, 3 fourths x plus 3 halves. Subtracting both sides by 3 x over 4, we get x over 4 is equal to 3 halves, or which implies that x is equal to 12 over 2 or 6. So the expectation of x sub 2 is equal to 6. The expected number of flips until we see two consecutive heads is in fact 6. Great. So that seems like a very good and sound process. The third part of this subproblem actually is going to use the exact same logic but because it's x sub 3 it's going to actually take the most space up so let's just get right into it so start with the diagram again and this time we are going all the way up to three heads that is our end state so we have again in order to move to the next state exactly a heads with probability one half and we can always get sent back to the starting state with a single tails and this you know this one right here is the most brutal because we got two heads we, we took two steps and then on that third flip we end up getting a tails which sends us all the way back to the beginning so let's get right into this expectation of x sub 3 is equal to we'll start with the tails case as usual so if we get a tails on the first flip it costs us a single flip, that tails costs us a single flip, and we are now, now required to still go through the entire process of reaching our three consecutive flips, which we've defined to take x number of flips. So we'll just add that x. So this is our tails. So now we have the other side, our heads case. So now we're here we have a single heads. What happens if we get a tails at this case? So that can happen with probability one half. And if we do that, it's going to take, it's going to cost us two flips, right? Because the first heads and the second tails, two 
plus x and x because we're starting all the way back at the starting state we need to right and if we get a heads at this case that would be great and it would mean that with probability one half we get our third excuse me one half two plus x right okay so this is now we have two heads and with the probability one half we get our second head and if that happens again we have our two cases where we can get a tails and if this happens we have two heads now so we're at this point but a tails will send us all the way back to the beginning costing us three steps this time so three plus x that's because we're at the starting point as you know every other case however if we are lucky enough to get a heads on our third flip, so one, two, three, three heads right there, it will have taken us three flips, so the cost is three, but the game will be over. So there's no recursive case for this last portion. So now we have our monster compound expression that we need to evaluate. So let's just get right into it. We have one half plus x over two, plus one half and then we have this I'm just gonna do this whole portion first one plus x over two plus uh, let's see okay yeah okay three fourths plus x over four plus another three fourths right okay and then let's further expand this, we get one half plus x over four plus, you can combine those two to get three fourths plus x over eight. I just distributed that one half in this, this last step. Now let's combine terms. We have seven x over eight plus one plus three fourths so 7 over 4 is equal to x. We'll subtract 7x over 8 from both sides. We get x over 8 is equal to 7 over 4, which implies that x is equal to 56 over 4, or 14. Perfect. So this means that the expected number of flips to observe or witness three heads in a row is 14 flips. Beautiful. All right, great. Alright guys, let's solve the final subproblem, which asks us to find the general expression for the value, the expectation of x sub i. So in this case, i could take on 1, 2, 6, 10, or 100. Whatever the case may be, we want to find an expression which gives us the expected number of flips until we see that many consecutive heads. So there's a lot of ways that we could go about this problem, as is true for almost any math problem. And I think some kind of pattern matching approach would be our best option in terms of efficiency, meaning that we could go through the process of enumerating the general case for i equals 2, 3, 4, and coming up with a very big compound expression and then reducing it. Or we could use our past work, which gave us the expectation of x sub 1 equaling to 2, expectation of x sub 2 is equal to 6, and the expectation of x sub 3 is equal to 14. Using these three data points to pattern match an expression which allows us to generalize what we're looking for. So because this problem is binary in nature, at every turn we can either have a heads or a tails and it could send us back to the starting point. I think intuitively it makes a lot of sense that the expression that we're looking for it's going to be 2 to the power of something. We don't know what that something is. And it's going to be offset by another something, so something else. So we'll say plus or minus something else. So this, even just looking at 2, 6, and 14, we can kind of intuitively see that there is some exponential nature to this problem. And 2 just seems like the very logical base, given the nature of 
flipping coins. Great, so now we can, this is where I think a very important quantitative skill of pattern matching comes in. We can say that, you know, so one is to two, two is to six, and three is to 14. You know, a very logical first guess would be that maybe that something right there is just one because then we could have two to the one plus or minus, you know what? I don't know what I'm doing calling these, we'll just call them X and Y. Um, anyways, maybe we'll say that X is equal to one and then the Y is equal to zero and that would satisfy this case right there. However, we very quickly see that for two equal, for um, X equals two, we need some kind of offset because these expressions down there are not even multiples. They're not e even powers of two, excuse me. So there is going to be an offset of something. Great. Another key observation would be to note that this term 14 is very close to 16, a power of two, and this term six is also very close to a power of two, eight. And in both of these cases, we're actually subtracting our power of two by two. So we can have two to the x minus two. So that's just kind of how we are guessing and checking this, this method of uh, subtracting two from our power. And if that was the case, we would be having two to the x is equal to eight and two to the x is equal to 16. Where in this case we have two, in this case we have three. Well then we can see that the x is equal to the input plus one. So we'll call this, uh, the input is i. So the x is equal to i plus one. Great. And very quickly we can just verify that this is true even for our original base case. So two to the i plus one minus two is equal to two squared minus two, which is equal to two. Great, that's exactly the value that we were looking for. So now we know that the x value is i plus one. I really expanded deeply about, about this process of pattern matching, but I think intuitively, it should come naturally, I think, to a lot of people applying to these positions, to quants. I don't mean to sound uh, reductive in any way. It's, it's, a very, uh, it's a very tricky skill to acquire, but it's actually one that these interviews test quite explicitly, having you do sequence and series matches and tests where you're asked to estimate the next value or to interpret the rule. This is just one way that such a scale could be useful in real life, where we are able to solve this expression, where, just to make it clear, the expression is 2 to the i plus 1 minus 2. We were able to come to this expression without having to do any advanced you know, calculus or summations or anything that might be more time consumptive. Anyways, thank you guys for listening to my explanation of the final sub problem. I hope it made intuitive sense, and I hope to see you guys on the next problem. Thank you.